I'm going to talk to you about managing your numbers and grow your business. And what I'm actually talking to you about is the relationship between bookkeepers and business owners, or business owners if you are your own bookkeeper, which a lot of business owners are. So I'm not going to tell you how to do bookkeeping. I'm not going to uh, tell you how to, uh, how to understand your business, but I'm going to talk about some of the things that we see all the time uh, where those relationships fall down and things that people don't understand. Um, I have to just keep walking over here to tap that. Ah, even better. Even better. Okay. Um, can you all hear me? Okay. All right, so just to tell you a little bit about myself and how I can talk to you about this, um, 9 to 3 is my second business. I had another business before for 18 years, which I sold, and, and now I have 9 to 3 for 10. So I've been in small business for a long, long time, actually, ever since I was 18. In between those two businesses, I actually did a traineeship. I was offered a traineeship with an accounting firm, and I took it. Uh, so that's how I got all my bookkeeping knowledge. So I worked with that accounting firm for about two and a half years. Um, I'm a professional partner with Myob and a, a licensed reseller, um, and now I'm, I run 9to3. Um, at 9to3, we specialise in placing staff, and we place a lot of bookkeepers. So we're the middleman, so we get to see bookkeepers coming back to us and saying, oh, the client does this or the client does that, I hate working with them because la, la, la. And we also get the clients coming back saying, oh, the bookkeeper does this, the bookkeeper does that, blah, blah, blah. And we get the accountants as well that say, oh, you know, I'm not getting this from the bookkeeper and the bookkeeper saying, I can't stand that accountant. So I'm kind of well placed because I'm in the middle of all of that um, to be able to talk to you about some of those things. Um, and I'm a registered BAS agent. I don't do bookkeeping anymore, except for a partner for PricewaterhouseCoopers because he gives us a lot of business and he pays me a lot. So I keep doing it for him. But, um, but otherwise, I don't really. So the question is, is this you or is this your bookkeeper? Now, if this is you, you badly need a bookkeeper or you need some office support. If this is a picture of your bookkeeper, you need to get rid of them and get somebody <laughs> else, okay? The whole reason for having a bookkeeper is so that you don't have this kind of, of picture in your office. So I'm going to tell you a few things uh, uh, just generally about bookkeepers. Bookkeepers do need lots of space. You know, we have retail clients and they want to put the bookkeeper uh, in a corner in the hallway between the kitchen and the cafe. You know, and it's really difficult for them to work there because there's generally a lot of paperwork. Uh, they need to spread out. They need a good sized desk. So I say these things because if you're getting a bookkeeper in your business, you know, these are some of the things just to think about. And the first thing a bookkeeper will do is they're going to sort all that mess of paper. And I've had people say to me, well, she doesn't seem to be doing much, she just sort of shuffles papers. And I'm like, well, that's actually a really effective use of your time. If you've got a bookkeeper in and, you know, they come in and you empty your pockets and you go, oh, here's all my receipts and here's this, and they just start doing, uh, you know, the top document on the pile and then the next document, that's a really ineffective way of working. You'd sort them first into their different categories so that you're much faster at working. Um, they also need lots of filing space. You know, the whole system should be the paperwork comes in, the source documents, the bookkeeper does the processing, then they file them. And they file them in a way that you can find them. You know, that's an important part. You should be getting your bookkeeper to do the filing. They need to develop a system. Like all good bookkeepers should develop a system. But the key thing is that sometimes you need to give permission for people to develop <coughs> that system. Not everybody will just do that automatically. So as a business owner, if you've got a bookkeeper that's working for you, you need to actually say to them, I want you to develop me a system, you know. Where will we leave my source documents? How will you process them? Where will they go after that? What's the filing system? Um, and just make sure that you're actually asking for that. And the other thing is, sometimes people say to me, I've looked at the bookkeeper and they're just looking at the screen. Like, what's going on? Don't they know what they're doing? Or people say to me, we want a bookkeeper. Oh, you know, it's just data entry. And I'm like, no, no, no. Bookkeepers are not data entry. The reason why there's that perception is because anyone can go to Officeworks or online, buy QuickBooks, buy Myob, bring it home, put something in. It just looks like a check button. You know, I'll type something in, hit the record button. Got no idea what happens to it over after that. Just disappears, but I'm a bookkeeper. It's not like that at all. A bookkeeper actually knows what happens when you hit the record button and, and where that information's going. 
and they must review their work. That's a, a given. And sometimes that means scrolling through reports and just looking at the screen. So it's not about how quickly does your person type and just put the information in, but a good bookkeeper will actually review, will pull up reports, look at different things, check allocations, um, and again, you know, that should be encouraged. So, uh, generally, a bookkeeper should know your business inside out. Now, I remember when I was bookkeeping going to clients once a quarter, and it was really difficult, because I'd walk in, and I don't know what's gone on in the last three months, and then they'd throw all these things at me, I wouldn't have the foggiest what's happened there. So I can't really give them good service because you know that time frame is so in between is so big. So if you've got somebody coming in once a quarter, just be aware of that and make sure that you think they're not going to have an idea. Plus, I'll be honest, as soon as I've left your business, your business is gone out of my head. I don't care personally about it except for the time that I'm there. I'm on to someone else's business. So three months later, you know, I really am struggling to kind of recollect everything that's going on. A good bookkeeper should keep an eye on your bank balances, keep an eye on unreconciled transactions. That means that things that have been entered but have never actually come out of the bank account. And I love it, you know, bookkeepers say to me, oh, the bank accounts are reconciled. And I'll go and have a look and there's all these unreconciled transactions, you know, back for three years, which they never deal with. So, you should be, a good bookkeeper should be looking at that. They should understand the concept, and so should you if you're a business owner, of business versus personal. They are not the same, okay? So you have your business entity and you have your personal entity. So I would expect a good bookkeeper would understand that and they would split up receipts, meaning if I go and buy petrol, that may be a deduction to the business, but if I also buy my cigarettes, my Coke and my, you know, my whatever else at the uh, petrol station, that they should be split up. That's a personal um, purchase. So a good bookkeeper would do that automatically and split those things. Keep a fixed asset register for you. So look at you know, your fixed assets in your business. And understand super payroll and awards. Now that's a maybe. And this is a mistake a lot of people make. They think that they'll get a bookkeeper in and they've got some staff and the bookkeeper will understand exactly how to pay that staff, how to do their penalty rates and their overtime. Not necessarily, because a bookkeeper is not a payroll specialist. They may not have a HR background. So you just have to be careful of that one. Um, you may need to get somebody in to talk to them about which award it is you're employing under and to understand the pay rates for that award. So just be careful with that one. A really good bookkeeper should remind you to pay your bills, okay? That's what mine does for me. Actually says, Catherine, if you don't pay the MasterCard, you know, we'll get late fees. Because we get busy, so I rely on her, you know, to keep me on track and to remind me those things, you know? The soup is due, don't forget to lodge the PAYG. She should remind me about those things, when to pay the super. Keep me informed of account balances. So basically, you know, where the bank account is sitting, with your business, you know, you should have that information all the time and your profit, you know, I do that weekly. I can track week to week if we're up, if we're down a bit, exactly where we're going. Um, so a good bookkeeper should be able to give you that sort of information. If you're doing it yourself, you know, they're the sort of things that you have to do for yourself. Good bookkeeper should keep you informed about um, a drawings account or a loan account. You know, all of us in business, you have things where you personally pay for things for the business. You know, you go out, you put money in a meter for whatever, you buy a train ticket, all that money comes out of your pocket, but there's still business expenses. So a good bookkeeper should be able to enter those and then be able to give you a report that shows you all of those sort of items. Um, I used to run a report and give it to the clients and then they'd go through and they'd say to me, oh no, you know, that one there that you've, you've allocated to my personal account, no, no, that was actually a business expense, you know, and they would double check it. So they'd keep me informed about that. Um, also filing, obviously, that's a bookkeeper has to do that and everybody hates filing, I hate it as well, but that's part of the job. So you would expect that your bookkeeper should not have those piles and piles of paper. They should file regularly. And make decisions and then inform the owner. You know, the worst thing is having somebody in your office that does a bit of work and every five seconds is going, 
oh, Catherine, where do I allocate that? Or Catherine, you know, what, what, how do I do that? Or Catherine, I've done this and put this here. That would just drive me insane. A good bookkeeper should make decisions. That's your job. So you make the decisions, but then you inform the owner at the end of it because you're running reports and saying, well, this is what I've done. And then the owner will tell you. It's a much better way of working than asking the questions all the time. But not all bookkeepers will do these things. And I love that skull there, bookkeeper, trained professional, do not try this at home. <laughs> I really like that. So the thing is, and I can say these things because I have worked as a bookkeeper, all right? So look at the personality type of a bookkeeper. We are people who like to dot the I's and cross the T's. We are process driven, source document, enter it in, allocate it, file it. You know, that's the personality of a bookkeeper. That's a good bookkeeper. When we're recruiting, they're the sort of things we look for. I remember one lady one time uh, for a job in the city, an accounts job, and at the end of our interview, she said to me, look, I hope you don't mind, but can I just point something out in your registration agreement? And I said, yeah, sure. And she said, a clause 2B, you've got a spelling error in the third word. And I thought, <laughs> I want her. Like, she got the job. I mean, she was fantastic. But it's that kind of attention to detail. We're interviewing bookkeepers and they come in and, you know, they're a mess, they're running late, you know, and, oh, we have to do passports because we do federal government work. Oh, I'm sure I've got my passport here somewhere. You know, they're just a bit of a mess. Do you want that person doing your bank recs? Probably not. You know, you're looking for that personality type. So you've got to think then, does that personality type, is that going to be the same sort of personality type that will be highly proactive with you and will drive you and will say, right, you need to do this and you need to do this? Probably not. They're a different type of personality type. Unless you get a bookkeeper that's running their own business, because then they've got that sort of entrepreneurial kind of a streak and they're more likely to be like that. The reason I say this is because you have to give guidelines to bookkeepers and you have to give them permission to um, give you information. You have to say to them, you know, I want you to make decisions about this. I want you to tell me because by nature, they probably won't. You know, uh, somebody who has that ability to really push and drive is probably going to end up going into their own business or, or won't remain a, a bookkeeper necessarily working for somebody else. So you really need to train that personality type. My bookkeeper is fantastic. She's been with me for seven years, absolutely brilliant. In the beginning, she used to ask me, should she buy another box of paper for the printer? You know, little things like that because she just doesn't have that, that sort of personality. And over the years, we've just worked, and now she's fantastic, questions every bill that comes in. I said to her, don't ever give it to me and say, oh, here's the insurance bill. Don't give it to me till you've rung the other insurance companies, you know, and we've got a process now where we check, you know, the prices of things. So now she's fantastic, but it takes time to train. Communicating is the most important thing between bookkeeper, client, accountant. It's just so, so important. Making sure that you're speaking to them all the time. Train your bookkeeper to ask you questions at the end. And it's a thing I see all the time. We often take on uh, trainees through TAFE and that sort of thing, because uh, we have retail clients and they need bookkeepers, but they don't have an office, they have a shop. So what will <laughs> happen is that we will have people in our office that will do their work. Uh, but I see it time and time again, you know, they drive you nuts because every five minutes they're asking you a question. So the first thing that I do is say, don't ask me questions. Do your work and you have a pile which is called the too hard pile. You put your pieces of paper in there and at the end we'll have a good 15 minutes, we'll sit, we'll go through everything. It's a much better way of working. But you as the business owner, you need to let your bookkeeper know about things. Like if you've purchased an asset or done something different, it's important that you tell them. You know, I used to find this a lot. People wouldn't tell me things and then it's very hard. So we need to make sure, you know, I'll often come in and say, oh, look, I've done this or I've purchased this or just to keep them aware. Let them know about changes in the business. If you're running a business, you know, we're all really entrepreneurial and you think, great, I'm going to do this now, I'm going to go in this direction and do this, this and this. Oh, but I forgot to tell the bookkeeper. So now all these expenses are coming in or I'm paying out money for different things and the poor bookkeeper's got no idea. So you must make sure that, you know, you're telling the bookkeeper those things. Um, things like staff changes, um, rates of pay, you know, I'm going to pay so-and-so a bonus or I'm going to put their wages up. 
um, you know, you need to let people know about that. Um, and then you work with your bookkeeper to develop reporting functionality. So we actually um, are running a course with the BEC uh, at the end of this month and in that we'll actually be looking specifically at the sort of reports you should be asking and getting. But it's up to you as the business owner to do that, to get those reports. I can't tell you how many times I've placed, you know, brilliant bookkeepers for 10 years, but the vast majority would not, off their own bat, go to the business owner and say, I've got this plan, how about, you know, every month or every week I give you this report, I've looked at your business and thought this is what you need. They're generally not that sort of personality type. So it's up to you to work with them and say, well, this is the information that I need, you know, can you give me that? Lead by example. If you're the boss of the business and you've got somebody coming in, even if it's once a quarter, the way that you act is, is the way that they're going to act. Like, you know, my team know that, like, I'm right across the detail all the time. You know, everything's cut and dried. So they're going to do that. They can't be slack because they know that, that I'm not. Schedule an accounts meeting every week or month. Okay, I will tell you how many times uh, we have clients call us up and they say, usually not our bookkeeper, but they've come and they've said, look, I had another bookkeeper, you know, and I've had to get rid of them or they've left. And after 10 years now, you know, I've looked at the accounts or I've been talking with the accountant and we found all these dreadful errors and da 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 da. And I'm like, so how often did you review your accounts? Oh, never. You know, just gave them to the accountant who maybe just did the tax and didn't ask the questions as well. Not like Terry, but you know, somebody else that, that would just do that. I mean, I've got some great stories for you. You know, bank accounts that haven't been reconciled for 10 years and, and have tax returns done on them every year and that sort of thing. So um, I say to the business owners, well, when did you review them? Oh, never. And often it's because business owners don't actually know how to review them. You know, they're scared of doing that. Oh, you know, the bookkeeper just comes in, does the work and goes. Oh, and, and the desk is clear. You know, the in tray is clear. Well, great. No, not great. You need to review it. Um, you need to understand your own business and you need to understand your financial reports. You need to review your accounts and question the numbers. I love that picture too. You mean, I have to pay all that in taxes? You shouldn't have a surprise from your accountant because you should kind of know and you'd be working with your accountant to know where you're heading and you know where it's going to be. Um, slack management leads to slack staff. We had a client for about four years and this client was the slackest. You would email them, they would never respond. You would call them, they would never answer. Just the slackest ever. Worked with the accountant who said, hey Catherine, don't worry, they're the same for me. I email them, they don't answer. I call them, they don't answer. So what happened with that client was the really good bookkeepers we had placed in there left within three months because they'd, end, they'd come and say, I don't want to work with them anymore. I can't get the information, they're painful. They'd never pay their bills. We're always chasing them. I'm just going to leave. The okay bookkeepers who would start off good would end up slack because there's slack management. So they start thinking, Oh, you know, if they don't care, why should I? It's sort of a human nature kind of thing. We just had terrible trouble over the whole four years of trying to manage this client. We don't have them anymore, thank God. But that's what happens. Slack management, you get slack workers. So just think about that. And mostly important, introduce them to your accountant. We've got some great accountants here today. Get your bookkeeper, give them your accountant's phone number, get your accountant, give them the bookkeeper's phone number because if they have that good working relationship, the whole thing works so much easier. So good input in is good input out or good output. So if you've got somebody putting garbage into your system, you'll get garbage out. So you as a business owner can make that system a little bit easier by some really simple little things. You know, have some in trays and split up your receipts as you go, it's so easy. I have like four and one says paid by internet, paid by cash, paid by credit card and then there's I think one for other documents and it's so easy, you know, just receipts and things go in there. When the bookkeeper gets it, it's just incredibly easy and quick for them. It saves you money. I'm often saying to clients, if you just sort it just a little bit before your bookkeeper gets there, it's so much quicker and easier. And also you can put information on those if they're um, a little bit different. 
Um, some of you might know we ran this event in May, Australia's Biggest Business Morning Tea. So we had lots of receipts for that, which was an unusual thing. So all I'd do is write the initials on it, but it just made it clear for everybody, you know, what that expense was. So doing little things like that can, can really help. If you're doing your accounts yourself, do that as well because what happens then is you do it daily you know as you as you come in you open your wallet take out your petrol receipt you put it in the appropriate spot so when you come to do your bookkeeping it's all there the more efficient you are the more that you will save money um, as I said you can write some basic information on your source documents as well so that helps people as well like how it was paid you know the worst thing is and this takes so much time and, and clients never understand this you get a document and you don't know how it's paid, you don't know when it's paid, you don't even know if it's paid, it's just in the bundle. So what you have to do is you have to go and search. You know, you've got to search for the amount of money and then you're going, oh, what if they paid that much and that month together? I'll join them together, I'll search for that. I can't find that. All right, I'll just search under the name Optus and see you know, every payment that they've made for Optus. And that sort of thing just wastes time and takes so long. So simple things like writing on your source documents how it's paid makes it very efficient. Things like job numbers, if you want to track things like you want to track individual clients and expenses for clients or individual cost centres in your business or divisions, you know, just setting up a little system of job numbers where you say, well, all of the receipts for this client, this will be the job number, things like that. Um, unusual allocations, so as I said when we had the morning tea, things, receipts that would come in that are not normal, but just to let the staff know that that was part of the morning tea. So anything that's a bit different. And I guess the key about bookkeeping is a lot of people think that you do it so you can pay your BAS, um, so you can pay your PAYG and you can give it to the accountants, you know, to do their work. And yes, that's one reason, but the greater reason is so you can make business decisions. It's about your business. It's about looking at your numbers now, I'm not an accountant, so I can't, you know, give you any advice on numbers or anything like that. I can only, you know, show you reports and tell you how those numbers came about from the system. But it's about looking at those numbers and then saying, okay, you know, I noticed that this month we're paying so much more in communications. Why is that? Or, you know, gee, the rent's gone up. I never realised that. You know, I need to track those things. Or, you know, seeing your business in terms of a yearly cycle. What are your good months? What are your bad months? Because when you do those things, it enables you to make business decisions. And let me tell you, viewing your P&L and seeing things go down or not be so good is the quickest way to get you back on track. You know, you look at that and you go, whoa, you know, I've really got to be careful, you know, about what I'm doing here. So, so make sure you use your numbers in your business to actually assist you to make those um, decisions. The sort of things you should be able to ask your bookkeeper, which they should be able to tell you. Search for individual amounts of money. Oh, there's an amount of money on my bank statement, $409.18. Can you tell me what that was for? I mean, they should be able to go in and find that over any period of time. It's dead easy. Um, payments to an individual. Can you tell me how much I paid Sue Smith for the month of July? I just want to know that. That's easy. You should be able to tell that. How much bonus did I pay to my employee? So uh, can you tell me in the last three years, how much of bonus did I pay to Michael? And what was the profit over those three years? And can you work out uh, those bonuses, what percentage of profit were they? Because I want to work out what to do this year. You know, those sorts of things. I mean, it's an amazing array of information that you can get from your bookkeeping. Um, can you tell me when we updated Sue's PC with antivirus? Little things like that. But here's the key. To do that, your bookkeepers need to write memos. Okay, that means little notes in the transaction about what it was. Because I can guarantee you, within one month of you doing something, you will not remember what you paid that for. Some things are, you know, dead easy, like, you know, Australia Post, you're going to know what that is. But even things like, you know, if you go to Officeworks, and sometimes I question, gee, that was a big bill. You know, we've got an account with Officeworks, how come that's so big? And it might be because it was printer toner or something like that, but it enables you, you know, once I know, oh, that was because we had to buy toners, then you're like, okay, that's acceptable. So it's really important for bookkeepers, and if you're doing it yourself, to write memos, because in a month you won't remember. In six months or 12 months, you've got no hope of ever remembering. Um, 
looking at your system about how you process things. Do you actually pay all your bills and just leave them paid? Most small businesses do that. Just leave them paid for the bookkeeper and then the bookkeeper enters them paid. Or do you work on unpaid bills, which we do? So, which is basically the bookkeeper's entering them unpaid and then I'm getting a report weekly and saying pay that, pay that, pay that. So whichever way you use, most businesses tend to do paid because it's simpler. Um, but making sure that you have a system and that your bookkeeper knows you know, what your system is. Whose responsibility is it to pay the bills? You know, ultimately you're the business owner, but a lot of business owners do delegate that to the bookkeeper. Whatever you do, do not give them access to your bank account, okay, straight away. You know, I see that all the time within, you know, they've started one week, you know, and they've got full access to your bank account. Sorry for bookkeepers, but you just don't do that. You also don't leave your checkbooks lying around. I've seen bookkeepers that have stolen large amounts of money through forging signatures and checkbooks. So you don't leave those sort of things lying around. And so easy, you can do, you can give them full access to your bank account and like in my case, they can do everything. They can view everything, they can do everything, but they can't authorise. That's the difference. So they'll put in all the payments and then they'll send me an email and say, Catherine can check the bank and I just go in and click authorise. You know, it's very easy to do. Um, do you print or write cheques? That's a bit of an aged one now, but you would be amazed how many people still do that, that actually write cheques for things. But I certainly wouldn't be doing that. It's much quicker and efficient to pay online. Um, and again, as I said before, make sure your bookkeeper is reminding you about things. And if they're not, ask them. Say, can you remind me? This is what I want you to do. Put it in a job description. This is what I want you to do. Remind me about these things. So some of the examples I've seen over the years uh, of people's bookkeeping is I'll say to a client, oh, so you owe American Express $14,000. Say, no, we pay that at the end of every month. Well, that's what your accounts say because you never review it and you never ask the question. So it actually says that. Or your bank account has, it's in the red, $16,000. No, 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 that's not true. We've actually, I looked yesterday, you know, we've got $8,000 in the bank account. Well, that's, you know, that's what your books are saying. We have to look at that. Why is that saying that? You owe $67,000 in PAYG. <laughs> no, I don't. Well, again, that's what it's saying in there. Um, you've got two bank accounts. That's a beauty because I, I remember saying this to a client once, you've got two bank accounts here. And I was just, I wasn't even, I was just saying it in a, a sort of, we're having a discussion and saying, oh, okay, so you've got two bank accounts. And they said, no, no, we've only got one. I said, which one's that? Oh, it's this one here. So you've, what's this other account with, you know, $150,000 balance in it? It's all errors. That's <laughs> what it is. It's all errors, you know, but, you know, that's, that's, you know, probably going to go to the accountant, those sorts of things. You owe suppliers $80,000. This is so funny. Oh, okay, so you know, looking at your balance sheet, so you, you've got $80,000 in, um, in uh, creditors to pay. No, no, we don't have any creditors. We're a cash business. We don't have any at all. So you know, we're like a retail shop. Well, that's because your bookkeepers <coughs> entered them in incorrectly, and that's what it says. So you can, can you get a picture of, of how big these errors can be, or you're owed 37,000 and that can go either way. It can be the client going, no, no, our debtors sit at about 60,000, or half of them are then missing from your system, or no, our debtors are really low, well then your bookkeeper hasn't been applying payments, you know, and they're sitting there. So, so does that give you sort of an idea about the different things that you can see? So when we run the BEC seminar, um, what we're going to be talking about is, is touching on that again, but going in much deeper into, if you're doing your accounts for yourself, what reports should you be running for yourself? How are you going to read them? What are the questions that you should be looking for? If you've got a bookkeeper, what are you going to ask that bookkeeper for? And if you are a bookkeeper, I actually did this, uh, I did the seminar uh, in North Sydney and it was fantastic because we had half bookkeepers and half clients. It was really interesting. And um, anyway, it was great because the bookkeepers were sort of saying, oh, well, you know, I like to offer this or that. And the clients were saying, well, what I need is this or this. It was fantastic. So looking at the ways you can use your bookkeeper, like how you can ask them to, you know, get you some budgeting and cash flow information. Also, what's your role as a business owner and what is the bookkeeper's role? So just making sure, you know, there are some things your bookkeeper can't do. You know, a lot of people like to think the bookkeeper's the accountant. They're not the accountant. You know, you've got to go to the accountant for those parts. So talking about that, 
the most common errors you know, that we see all the time and things to be aware of, um, and compliance with payroll. You know, payroll is quite complex these days. There are a lot of awards, and I have a unique skill set because it's HR and, and bookkeeping, but understanding the awards, whether they're industry-based or occupation-based, so just going through all of that. So the seminar is on July the 30th at 9.30 to 1 o'clock, is that right? And um, we would love to see you at that. Um, and in terms of how we can help you, if you're interested, obviously we supply on hired bookkeepers, which means that we're a, we're a contractor to you. We employ, so we employ bookkeepers. We have about 8,000 people on our books. We employ them and on hire them to you. We don't work under the national award system. We actually work under an ECA, or it's called an EBA now, which means that we don't have minimum charges. So theoretically, if you wanted someone for one hour, that's what you pay, one hour. Wouldn't make me happy, but that's what we can do. Um, so we also do clerical and marketing and sales staff, small business recruitment, consulting. Here's an interesting one that a lot of people don't know. They're, we've got three registered BAS agents in our business and we actually do training of accounts. And quite often when I was talking about my partner at PwC, he'll ring up and he'll say, Catherine, can you go out? They're in a horrible mess. Sort them out, get it back together and then put somebody in there. So that's what we do. So we'll actually sort it out, train the bookkeeper. Sometimes we train wives of husbands because you know the wife's going to do the accounts, all of that sort of thing. Um, so full kind of accounts department set up. Um, and my details are there. If you want to contact me, I'm only too happy to do that. And my, my final little thing is you've got a little postcard like this on your table, which this year is our 10th birthday. So we're giving away lots of gifts all year. And one of them is on our website, we've created these checklists. We call it Checklist Central. And we have all these fantastic checklists, the majority of which are written by our legal firm. And they range in price from $5 to $20. So they're dirt cheap and it's a present to you for our birthday. Um, and what they have is there's everything around record keeping, termination, interviewing, um, just work health and safety, warehouse checks for work health and safety. There's a million different checklists there. Really cheap, really useful. And the one I wanted to highlight to you today is we have a little one that we created called a MEP month-end procedure and it's a beauty. It's for bookkeeping and it just basically lists all the things that really you should look at at the end of the month or your bookkeeper should be doing. Um, often we've worked with bookkeepers where we've trained them in that and, and you know, we make them tick it off and that sort of thing and you can, you can manipulate it and add extra things but um, I think it's a whole eight dollars so um, if you're interested in that checklist it's on there. So are there any questions? You'll stun silence. <laughs> Yep. Broad question, what would you expect to pay for a bookkeeper? For a bookkeeper, uh, from 45 to 100. So depending on, um, depending on skills, experience, I usually consult for about 100. Um, but you know, I can do foreign currency and I've got a lot higher skills. Um, the, the cheapest generally, you know, I would say 40, 45, but then, you know, 50, 60, 70. You know, it's a skilled, a lot of people don't realise it's a very skilled position bookkeeping. It also depends whether or not you're employing. So we have clients that employ accounts people, obviously they're not going to pay $70 an hour, you know, for an employee. So much lower rate for employees. But if you have a contractor who's coming out once a week, once a month, something <coughs> like that, much higher. Yeah. Yeah? Catherine, I don't have a question, I just have to say so what you said is absolutely right. I mean, I'm just laughing. I can see. Yeah, I'm I can validated. See, I can see. I can see <laughs> so nerve-wracking. That you work with, I can see nothing. <laughs> yes. Um, but, you know, I think right then you summarised it. This, this net, this month-end procedure. We we had provided our bookkeepers, uh, you know, what we call a robust month-end procedure. Did you get that right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, absolutely. And you check. You should be checking it as you go because you know the worst thing you want is at the end of 12 months to find all these errors. But if you do it monthly. You know, it's all right, and um, and we've even written into those procedures sometimes that the accountant, depending on the different accountant you're working with, would also monthly like certain reports. You know, what would you like, and so make your bookkeeper send those off. And it's about setting up like a job description for your bookkeeper and making sure that they follow it. And don't let the bookkeeper make their mark by coming in undermining the existing relationships that settle there. One of the things they like to do is bring their own brand and start attacking the accountant. 
Yeah, you know, just settle down. Oh yeah. Well, it well, it's a two-way street, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. From a book. One of my well, yeah, well, only because my because the ones that say, oh, we can just put that through, can't we? <laughs> yes. <laughs> how, how, yeah. you know, how do you deal with that? Yes. Um, what's your view on dealing with that? Uh, well, I've had the same. My favourite is the lady who wanted everything for the dogs, dog food, bedding, everything, and it was like a chihuahua, to go to guard dogs, wait, it gets better, and everything for the cats to go to pest control. Okay, that's my favourite one. Um, so legally, as a registered BAS agent, you have a legal responsibility not to break the law. Okay, so, so legally they say, you know, you have to not break the law. However, it's a very difficult one because clients will say, you know, I want my child's school fees going to wherever. What I would do is I would put all of those things automatically into a drawings account or a loan account, a personal account. Then I would show the client. If the client then says, no, you need to move that, at the end of the day, I'm employed by the client, I would move it or I would put it in an account which highlights it to the accountant, but I put in a memo all the time which says, as per, and I put the person's name. You know, so I'm saying, I've been instructed to do this, but it, yeah, it is a really yeah, difficult I, one. But I think for me, it gets to the point where, well, you are not to put that much in there. I'm going to walk away because I can't. Well, then you, yeah, you pick, I mean, I mean I think if somebody is, is willfully dishonest, um, I worked for a company when I was back working for the accounting firm and, um, and he, had, uh, he had lots of dodgy things going on and I used to say to my husband, you know, one day someone's going to come up there with a gun to take him out and I just don't want to be there, you know, it was that sort of thing. So, you know, like I wasn't there very long and, you know, you just get rid of those sorts of clients. Um, but the other thing is often you can talk around people and that comes back to your communication because often as a bookkeeper you can sit with your client and say, okay, well, I've got to tell you, the accountant's never going to allow that, you know, like do you really want me to do it, you know, it's not really going to work and then I've even, uh, when I've got really good relationships with accountants because they would ring me about questions about the books and they'd say, well, you know, what's happened here and I'd say, well, you know, that's where they wanted to put it, that sort of thing. But Often, if you speak to your client, if they're reasonable, they'll come around, you know. But um, yeah, the cats and the pest control, I really <laughs> love that one. <laughs> but, yeah. Anything else? All right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Any questions? No problems. So thank, thank you very you much. much. Thank you. Very much.